Thank you for this time together. Uh, we ask that you open our hearts in te prosimo da nam odpreš naša srca to a very important subject za zelo pomembno temo and one that has a great deal of misunderstanding in ta tema ima je velik nesporazum o tej temi ja amongst believers around the world med verniki po svetu thank you that you promised to give us the holy spirit to teach us hvala ti da si obljubil da nam boš dal svetega duha ki nas bo poučil and to and lead us into all truth in nas vodi v vso resnico. In Jesus' name. V Jezusom imenu. Amen. Amen. Alright, well this subject of faith uh, versus law is a, is a very important subject. In ta tema o veri uh, proti uh, zakonu je zelo pomembna tema. It is a major theme of the New Testament. Je glavna tema nove zaveze. And probably Paul addresses this subject more than he does any other subject in the New Testament. In Pavel govori verjetno o tej temi bolj kot o katerikoli drugi temi. He emphasizes that we are saved by grace, not by any works of the law. In podarja da smo odrešeni po milosti, ne pa po delih in zakon. Mislim po delih zakona. And we'll talk more in the, in the next session about what the power of grace is. In v naslednjem delu bom več govoril o moči milosti. God's grace is really our relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit living inside of us. Božja milost je se pravi o sorry, milost. The whole the grace is is the relationship that we have with the Holy Spirit. Sprav milost je ta odnos ki ga imamo s svetim duhom. But tonight I want to talk a little bit and bring some understanding about the nature of law. In danes želim pač prinesti več razumevanja o naravi zakona. Jesus said, if you love me, Jesus je rekel, če me ljubiš, you will, boš, keep my commandments. Se držal mojih zapovedi. A lot of different people teach a lot of different things on that verse. Veliko ljudi uči različne stvari v tem verzu. John, the apostle John in his letter, in his epistles, in apostol Janez v pismih, says that this is the test that we know that we are his. Pravi da je to test da vemo da smo njegovi. If we keep his commandments. Če se držimo njegovi zapovedi. So what is Jesus saying? What is John saying? In kaj pravi Jezus oziroma kaj pravi Janez? Is it important to keep commandments, his commandments? Ali se je pomembno držati njegovi zapovedi? But what commandments are we called to obey? Ampak katere zapovedi smo poklicani, da jih obogamo. Because there's not just one category of laws, there's actually four different categories of law. Zato, ker so štiri različne kategorije zakonov. And I want to go ahead tonight and just take a little bit of time to walk through these very quickly and explain them just a little bit, introduce them to you. In danes se bomo sprehodili na hitro skozi te stvari in jih bomo na hitro razložili. The first category is what I call the Ten Commandments, the Big Ten. Prva kategorija je velikih deset, se pravi deset Božjih zapovedi. This was not given by man, this was not given through Moses, this was given by God himself directly. In to, te zapovedi niso bile podane preko človeka oziroma Mojzesa, ampak direktno od Boga. In these ten commandments, the Bible says God wrote with his own finger on tablets of stone. In piše, da je teh deset Božjih zapovedi Bog zapisal s svojim prstom vse na kamnite, mislim na kamne. And this first category command is Jesus actually took to a higher level. In te prve zapovedi, prvih deset zapovedi je Jezus povzdignil na višjo raven. The second category of law, which is referred to by the Jews as the Torah. In druga vrsta zakonov, katero judje imenujejo Torah, je se pravi to. And this is primarily the books of Moses. In to so te Mojzesove knjige. Those Jesus at the cross he fulfilled. In te te zakone je Jezus na križu izpolnil. The third category of law many times referred to as scripture. In tretja pač ta raven zakonov se pravi ki jih imenujemo kot beseda. God's word, yes. That Jesus continued at the cross. Je Jezus nadaljeval na križu. And the fourth category was known as the tradition of the elders. In četrta pa je bila tradicija starešin. And that Jesus 
are also referred to as the law. I na tudi te Jezus poimenoval kot zakon. And this was oral law at the time of Jesus. In to je bil ustni zakon v času Jezusa. Passed on from generation to generationally orally. Ki je bil predan iz generacije v generacijo preko ustnega izračuna. And what did Jesus do with this fourth category at the cross? In kaj je Jezus naredil s to četrto kategorijo na križu? He restricted it greatly. Omejil jo je. Not all tradition is bad. Ni vsa tradicija slaba. But when we elevate our tradition and make it equal in authority with God's word, ampak ko pozdignemo tradicijo in jo izinačimo z Bogom, then that's a serious problem. Je to resničen problem. That we are forbidden to do. In to nam je prepovedano. So let's go through these four now very quickly. Zdaj pojedimo skozi te štiri kategorije. The first one, the Ten Commandments, is God's moral eternal law. Prve, se pravi, prva kategorija deset Božjih zapovedi je Božje moralni zakon. This law was given by God long, long before Moses. In ta zakon je bil dan od Boga že veliko prej preden, pred Mojzesom. And this law was written on our hearts by God. In ta zakon je bil zapisan v naša srca od Boga. Long before Moses, veliko pred Mojzesom, from the beginning, že od začetka, Cain knew that murder was wrong. Je Cain vedel, da je bil umor napačen. Joseph knew that adultery was wrong. Joseph. Ja, Jožef je vedel, da je bilo prešuštvo napačno. The Bible says that Noah and Abraham, they fulfilled all of the laws and statutes of God. In piše tudi, da je Noe in Abraham, da so izpolnili vse te Bože zakone. So from the very, very beginning, we see that God has made His law, His eternal law, known to us. He's revealed it to our hearts. In že, se pravi, že od vsega začetka je Bog dal nam spoznati te zakone in jih razodel. And so what does Jesus do with this first category of law? In kaj je Jezus naredil s to prvo kategorijo zakona? He takes it to a higher level. Pozdignil jo je na višjo ravn. Jezus, by the power of grace, Jezus je s pomočjo milosti, does not free us from the Ten Commandments, nas ni, se pravi, svobodil od desetih zapovedi, He empowers us by grace to fulfill the Ten Commandments. Ampak nas je opolnomočil, da smo lahko izpolnili z Božjo milostjo teh deset zapovedi. On the Sermon on the Mount, the Lord began to teach about the Kingdom of God. Se pravi, na tej pridigi na gori je začel učiti o Božjem kraljestvu. And I remember reading this for the first time and thought how amazing this was. In ko sem prvič to prebral, sem si mislil, kako osupljivo je to. These are now Jews listening to this rabbi teaching. In kako so ljudje poslušali tega rabina, kako jih poučuje. It was something new, something fresh, something they'd never heard before. Je bilo nekaj novega, nekaj svežega, kar še prej niso slišali. And Jesus says, you've heard it said. In Jezus je rekel, slišali ste. But I say unto you. Da je bilo rečeno, ampak jaz vam pravim. You heard it said. Who? He's talking about Moses. On govori o Mojzesu. He's talking about the central figure in the Old Covenant. O osrednji figuri v Stari Zavezi. And he begins to teach. He says, you've heard it said. Moses said. In se pravi, tako pravi, slišali ste, da je bilo rečeno, oziroma da je Mojzes rekel. But now I say unto you. Ampak sedaj vam jaz pravim. And the crowds were amazed. In množice so bile se pravi osupljene. Because he claimed to be more authority, had more authority than did Moses. Zato, ker on je zauzel večjo avtoriteto, kot jo je imel Mojzes. Jezus was greater than was Moses. Jezus je bil večji od Mojzesa. And what Moses said, now Jezus says, I have the authority now to take to an even higher level. In Jezus je rekel, se pravi, to, kar je Mojzes rekel, ampak jaz imam zdaj avtoriteto, da to povzdignem na višjo ravn. In Jezus je povzdignil vseh deset zapovedi na višjo ravn. Jezus je povzdignil, da jaz ne komeni adultri. Slišali ste, da je bilo rečeno, da ne prešuštvoj. Ampak jaz vam pravim, da vrši vse 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 vse. Se pravi, da varujete misli svojega srca. Mojzes je rekel, ne ubijaj. 
I say unto you that if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. Ja s vam pravim, že če ste zasovražili svojega brata, ste krivi umora. Moses said, don't use the Lord's name in vain. Moses je rekel, ne uporabljaj Božjega imena prazno, u praznem pomenu. But I actually say, I say unto you, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Ja s vam pravim, naj bo vaš da, da in vaš ne, ne. All of the of the of these ten commandments are taken to a higher level. Vseh teh deset Božjih zapovedi je dvigneno na višje ravn. Jesus says, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Jaz, Jezus je rekel, jaz sem gospod sobote. Under Moses you set aside one day a week. Pod Mojzesom so izdvojili en dan v tedno. One day a week you entered into the Sabbath rest. In so vstopili v sobotni počitek. Now in me you can enter into Sabbath rest 24-7, every minute of every day. Zdaj pa v meni lahko vstopite v počitek vsak dan, vsako minuto v tednu. So Jesus did not do away with the Ten Commandments, he lifted them to a higher level. Jezus ni odpravil deset zapovedi, ampak jih je vzdignil na višjo ravn. And I frequently interact with many brothers who are very, very, very focused on the importance of us obeying the Ten Commandments. In veliko krat se srečujem z brati in sestrami, ki zelo povdarjajo to, da se držimo desetih zapovedi. I don't want to just obey the Ten Commandments. Jaz se ne želim samo, ne želim samo obogati deset zapovedi. That's old covenant. To je stara zaveza. I want to live in the power of the new covenant. Jaz želim živeti v moči nove zaveze. Because of the power of grace in our lives. Zato, ker moč milosti v naših življenjih. Not only do I not only do I obey the Ten Commandments, but I can exceed their standards in every way. Ne samo da lahko obogam deset Božjih zapovedi, ampak lahko presežem ta standard desetih zapovedi. Let's just look at a few verses. Poglejmo nekaj citatov. Jesus one day was asked, what is the greatest of the commandments? Jezus so enkrat vprašali, katera je največja izmed zapovedi. And you know this passage very, very well. Go ahead and read this if you would. Okay. Se pravi, v Mateju 22 od 36 do 40 pravi takole, Učitelj, katera je največja zapoved v postavi? Rekel mu je, ljubi gospoda svojega Boga z vsem srcem, z vso dušo in z vsem mišljenjem. To je največja in prva zapoved. Druga pa je, njej podobna, ljubi svojega bližnega, kakor samega sebe. Na teh dveh zapovedih stoji vsa postava in preroki. These two commandments, the entire, all of the prophets, all of the law of Moses rests upon these two. Spravi, na teh dveh zapovedih stoji vsa postava in vsi preroki. One day Jesus says, now I am going to share with you a new commandment. In nekega dne je rekel, Jezus, zdaj pa bom z vami delil novo zapoved. Jesus, excuse me, Moses gave you ten commandments. God gave Moses ten commandments. Bog je dal Mojzesu deset zapovedi. Now my father sent me. Zdaj pa je oče poslal mene. And I'm going to now give you but one commandment. In jaz vam bom dal eno zapovedi. I'm going to simplify the ten commandments. Bom poenostavil deset zapovedi. That, by the way, none of you could obey anyways. Ki jih vi tako ali tako ne morete obogati. Everyone broke the ten commandments. Vsak izmed vas je prelomil deset zapovedi. Up until that time, no one had ever lived and kept all ten commandments except for Jesus. Do tistega časa ni nihče živel in se držal vseh desetih zapovedi do Jezusa. But now at the cross there's going to be something new that's going to happen. Ampak na križu se bo zgodilo nekaj novega. God is going to pour out His Spirit of grace upon us. Bog bo izdil duha milosti na nas. And we'll have the desire and the power to be able to live. In bomo imeli željo in kontenje, da živimo. And so go ahead and read that, if you would. Se pravi, v Janezu 13. poglaje 34. do 35. vers. Novo zapoved vam dam, da se ljubite med seboj. Kako je sem jaz vas ljubil, tako se tudi vi ljubite med seboj. Potem bodo vsi spoznali, da ste moji čenci, če boste med seboj imeli ljubezen. So Jesus takes the Ten Commandments and says, now let me just give you one. In Jesus je rekel, zdaj vam bom dal samo eno zapoved. If you love me, keep my commandments. Če me ljubite, se držite mojih zapovedi. Love each other the way I love you. Ljubite drug drugega, kakor jaz vas ljubim. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. Ljubite 
Boga z vso dušo, z vsem mišljenjem, z vso močjo. Do this and you will fulfill all the requirements. Delajte to in boste izpolnili vse, vse zapovedi zakona. Now, is that, is that what Jesus taught? In ali je to Jezus učil? Okay, let's see if the Apostle Paul understood this the same way. Poglejmo, če je Apostol Pavel to razumel na enak način. Okay, so in, chap in Romans chapter 13, if you would read this. V Rimljanom 13. poglavje 80. Se pravi, ljubezen kot izpolnitev postavi. Ne bodite nikomor dožniki, razen če gre za medsebojno ljubezen. Dor namreč ljubi drugega je izpolnil postavo. Kaj ti zapovedi? Ne peš uštvoji, ne ubijaj, ne kradi, ne poželi. Pa tudi vse druge zapovedi so obsežene v besedi. Ljubi svojega bližnjega, kakor samega sebe. Ljubezen bližnjemu ne prizadeva hudega. Ljubezen je torej izpolnitev postave. So now Paul is referring to which category of law? Na katero kategorijo zakona se pravi se... Sklicuje je Pavel. He's referred to the Ten Commandments. Sklicuje se na deset zapovedi. Don't steal, don't murder. Ne kradi, ne ubijaj. And what's he say? In kaj še pravi? He says, if we will fulfill the commandment given, the new commandment, we will fulfill all of the Ten Commandments. Ampak, če bomo izpolnili novo zapoved, bomo izpolnili vseh deset zapovedi. So, as we're reading throughout the entire New Testament, and there is talking about different kinds of law, we need to understand what category of law we're talking about. In, ko beremo preko nove zaveze, vidimo različne kategorije zakona in moramo vedeti, v kateri kategoriji je govora. So, Romans 13, very clearly, Paul is talking about the first category. In v Rimljanih 13 je zelo jasno, da Pavel govori o prvi kategoriji. Let's go on to the second category, which is the Torah. Druga kategorija, ki je Tora. The Torah is referred, it literally means in the Hebrew, it means instructions. In Torah v hebrejščini pomeni dobesedno, se pravi, navodila. And this is primarily the first five books that were written by Moses. In to je prvih pet knjig v svetem pismu, ki jih je zapisal Mojzes. And it was given by God, it was given by God through Moses to give further instruction on the principles and living out the instructions of the law. In se pravi, to so navodila, ki jih je Bog dal Mojzesu, se pravi, da še, se pravi, da se pa je navodila za življenje, ja. And so now Moses writes an additional 613 laws. In Mojzes je zapisal na daljnih 613 zakonov. God gives 10 commandments written on stone. Bog je dal 10 zapovedi. And then to the books, and then to the five books of Moses. In preko petih knjig od Mojzesa. We are given 613 more instructions. Smo dobili še dodatnih 613 navodil. And within that is a great deal of ceremonial law. In tukaj je veliko ceremonialnega zakona. It basically gave very detailed instructions on the sacrificial system of animal sacrifices and how to deal with governmental issues and how to have a relationship with God. Spravi so dodatni navodila, kako se žrtvuje živali in spravi glede vlade in podobnih zadev. And so there are many today around churches around the world that teach us that we must obey the law. In veliko crkva je danes po svetu, ki nas poučujejo, da Moramo obogati zakon. And when I ask the question, what law are you referring to? They're referring to the Mosaic law, the Torah. In ko jih vprašam, na kater zakon se sklicujejo, se sklicujejo na ta zakon, ki je dan od Mojzesa, Torah. And what did Jesus do with the Torah at the cross? In kaj pa je Jezus naredil s Torah na križu? He fulfilled it. Izpolnil jo je. No longer do we need to sacrifice animals. Ni nam potrebno več žrtvovati živali. He is the Lamb of God. On je Bože jagne. All of the animal sacrifices, 1500 years of practicing the feast of Passover was fulfilled in Christ. Se pravi, in vsa ta žrtvovanja in 1500 let prakticiranja Pashe je bilo izpolnjeno s Kristusom. And Passover lambs had been slain every year in this festival. In vsako leto 
je bilo za Pasho zaklano jaknje in je bil festival. And it was all pointing to a fulfillment that would come one day. In je vse kazalo na to izpolnitev, ki bo prišla nekega dne. Where God the Father would provide the Lamb of God. Kjer bo Bog oče priskrbel Božje jaknje. You see, once that was fulfilled, no longer do we need to look at or practice ceremonial law, because it's been fulfilled. In ko je bil enkrat ta zakon izpolnjen, ni potrebno več, da ga ta ceremonialni zakon izpolnjujemo. We have all the feasts, not just Passover, but there were seven primary feasts. Je bilo sedem teh praznovan. They were the spring feasts. Se pa je spring pomladno praznovanje. Which was basically Passover. Kar je bilo v bistvu to Pasha. Unleavened bread. Unleavened bread, the feast of unleavened bread. Aha, se pravi praznovanje nekvašenega kruha. And Pentecost. In Binkošti. And Jesus fulfilled all three of these in his first coming. In Jesus je s svojim prvim prihodom izpolnil vsa ta tri praznovanja. Now the fall feasts are going to be fulfilled in his second coming. Se pravi nadaljno ta praznovanja bodo pa izpolnjena z njegovim drugim prihodom. The day of atonement. Dan od upitve. And the feast of tabernacles. In se pravi praznovanje tabernakla. These are all dress rehearsals that were all pointing to a fulfillment that is still yet to come. In te se pravi ta praznovanje kažejo na izpolnitev, ki šele prihaja. In the feast, in these feasts they had the feast of trumpets. In so imeli to praznovanje trobentanja. Okay, and the feast began at a particular time of the year with the alignment of the moon and they began by blowing trumpets throughout all of Israel. In v določenem delu leta je bilo to praznovanje in so začeli trobat. And what's the New Testament? When does the New Testament say that the Lord will return? In... When will the... When does the New Testament say that the Lord will return? In kaj pravi nova zaveza, kdaj se bo gospod vrnil? At the last trumpet. Ob zadnji trubenti. So all of this Old Testament was embedded with profound revelation that was pointing to a future fulfillment. Se pravi, vsa ta nova zaveza je bila vklopljena v to in je kazala na to prihodnjo izpolnitev. Let's look just at verse 2. Okay, if you would read Matthew chapter 5. Matej 5, 17 do 18. O postavi. Ne mislite, da sem prišel razvezati postavo ali preroke, ne razvezati. Temeč dopolniti sem jih prišel. Resnično povem vam, dokler ne pride ta nebo in zemlja, ne bo prišla niti ena črka ali ena črtica postave, dokler se vse ne zgodi. So Jesus fulfilled this category of law. Jezus je izpolnil to kategorijo zakona. And I'm asked frequently and I interact with others that says, should we, must we obey this ceremonial law as New Testament believers? In dosti krat me vprašajo, ali moramo obogati ta ceremonialni zakon kot novo zavezni verniki. And my position is that we do not. In moja pozicija je, da nam tega ni potrebno. Now, if you want to obey this, Ampak, če želiš to izpolnjevati, If you want to celebrate the feasts, Če želiš preznovati te praznike, And I know many people that do, In poznam veliko ljudi, ki jih, Okay, Paul says there's basically, there's two conditions that you must meet. Pavel pravi, da sta dva pogoja, ki jih moraš izpolniti. And that is, and they're listed here in Philippians and Romans and Galatians, just a few verses that they tell us clearly. In tukaj to piše v Filipljanih, v Rimljanih in v Galačanih. Whatever we do, we must do in faith. Kar koli že počnemo, moramo to početi v veri. Because it's not a faith, it's sin. If it's not a faith, it's sin. Ker če to ni vera, je to greh. And we cannot derive any righteousness from fulfilling these works of the law. In ne moramo si pridobivati kakršno koli pravičnost, če izpolnjujemo ta dela zakona. So one person says, well, you know, we, our church, we, we celebrate the feast of Passover every year. In se pravi, eden pravi, da v naši crkvi preznujemo, se pravi, to preznovanje Pashe vsako leto. And I say, great. In jaz s tim pravim, čudovito. Can you do it in faith? 
Ali to dilate vo veri. Do you think that you are better or more righteous than those who do not celebrate? Ali mislite da ste bolj pravični in boljši od drugih, ki tega ne izpolnjuje? Because if you're trying to derive righteousness, which means, okay, well, we're special because we believe and know something that you do not. Ke če skušaš črpati pravičnost iz tega, to pomeni, da si misliš, da si ti boljši od nekoga, ki tega ne počne. Ne? Uh, I, I have some friends that are very passionate about we must observe the Sabbath day. In uh, imam nekaj uh, prijateljev, ki so zelo strastni glede tega, da spoštujejo sobotni dan. Ne? And so first I ask, well, what day is the Sabbath day? In najprej jih vprašam, kateri dan je sobotni dan? For many believers it's Sunday. Uh, za veliko vernikov je to nedelja. For those that are a little bit more strict, it's, it's the Jewish Saturday. Za, katere, za nekatere pa je to uh, judovska sobota. And if we want to get a little bit more technical, it's from, it is from sunset on Friday uh, through, to, to, through the next day. In, sunset on Saturday, that's the Sabbath. Uh, se pravi sobotni dan, pravi sobotni dan pa je od zahoda v petek do zahoda v soboto. And so I ask, do you, do you feel that you are more righteous because you do this and others do not? In jih vprašam, ali se počutite bolj pravične, ker to izpolnjujete so po drugi, ker to je problem. Ne? Now, do I believe that it's a smart and wise thing to take a day off? Uh, ali mislim, da day? je pametno, da si zameš prost dan v tednu? Absolutely. Seveda. Okay? But it's not law. Ampak to ni zakon. It's you are not more righteous if you do and less righteous if you don't. Nisi bolj pravičen, če to počneš, ali manj pravičen. Uh, če tega ne počneš. The second criteria that Paul gives us. Uh, drugi kriterij je tole. And again, not just verses, we're talking now entire chapters of the New Testament. In ne govorimo samo o verzih iz Nove Zaveze, ampak o celotnih poglavih iz Nove Zaveze. And that is that we are not allowed to push our convictions and our opinion, our conscience on other people. Spa nismo poklicani za to, da osiljujemo naša mnenja in prepričanja na druge. So if you believe that it's important to obey this uh, Sabbath day? Uh, če misliš, da je pomembno, da izpolnjuješ sobotni dan? Good. Dobro. Another person may not. In, ampak nika druga oseba pa tega mogoče ne izpolnjuje. Okay. I came from a culture living in America where we celebrate Christmas. Uh, jaz prihajam iz Amerike, kjer uh, kot kultura preznujemo Božič. You know, and I have a lot of people that say it's a pagan holiday. In uh, veliko ljudi pravi, da je to poganski praznik. And to celebrate this pagan holiday is, is not a good witness for Christ. In uh, da preznujemo ta poganski praznik ni dobro pričevanje uh, za Kristusa. But in my house, we've never celebrated a pagan holiday. Ampak v moji hiši nikoli nismo preznovali poganskega praznika. And we know Jesus was not born on the 25th of December. We know that. In vemo, da Jezus ni bil rojen uh, 25. decembra. Yeah, that's the winter solstice. To je uh, zimski solstici. Ne? And Jesus was not born on, in the winter solstice. In Jezus takrat ni bil rojen. But we can still make Jesus the reason for the season. Ampak še zmeraj lahko uh, zaradi Jezusa preznujemo ta praznik. Ne? Because the entire world has to stop whether you like it or not and acknowledge the Son of Man, the Son of God was born. In uh, zato, ker če marate ali pa ne, uh, celoten svet se ostavi in uh, mora priznati, da je bil uh, sin človeka vrojen. I have a, a pastor friend who, who very, very passionately is an anti-Christmas. In uh, imam prijatelje pastorja, ki je zelo proti uh, temu božičnemu preznanju. And every Christmas he goes off on vacation to ski. In vsak Božič uh, gre na dopust uh, na smučanje. So what's the second uh, criteria, instruction that Paul gives? In uh, ka, kateri je drugi kriterij oziroma navodila, ki jih uh, Pavel? I'm not allowed, I am not allowed to judge my friend and my friend is not allowed to judge me. Uh, ni mi dovoljeno, da sodim svojega prijatelja ali pa da prijatelj sodi mene. Does that make sense? Ali je to smiselno? And this will take out half of the division in the body of Christ if we understand what I'm trying to share. Če bi to razumeli, bi odozelo stran polovico razdora v Kristusem telesu. If you would read Colossians chapter 2. Kološanom 2, 16 do 17. 
Naj vas po tem takem nihče ne obsoje zaradi jedi in pijače ali zaradi praznikov, mlajev in sobot, kaj ti vse te reči sosenca prihodnih. Telo pa je Kristusova. Is that clear? Ali je to jasno? Do not judge each other in these matters. Ne sodite drug drugega v teh zadevah. But if you love me, keep my commandments, Jesus said. Ampak če me ljubite, se držite mojih zapovedi. He wasn't talking about the Torah. In ni govoril o Tori. He was not talking about the ceremonial law. In ni govoril o ceremonialnem zakonu. Does that make sense? Ali je to smisleno? Okay, if we misinterpret that, we're going to cause all kinds of problems and that's exactly what we have today. Če to napačno razumemo, bomo imeli veliko problemov. So the only question is, is that whatever we do, are we doing it in faith? Jedino vprašanje je, da kar koli že delamo ali to delamo v veri, because it's something the Lord has spoken to us individually, to our hearts, ker ali je to nekaj, kar je nam Bog govoril vsakemu pač individualno na naša srca, you know, that's what's important. To je pomembno. We can have differences in opinion over matters of conscience. Imamo lahko različna mnenja o konšes. Konšes, ne naša. Aha, se pravi o naši vesti. To some people the Lord says, do not drink. Nekateri ljudje pravijo, da ne pijte. Da ne drink. In ne pije. But don't push that on other people, because the Bible does not say that. Ampak tega ne usiljujte drugim, kaj ti Biblija tega ne dela. By and large, in evangelical churches in America, v veliki večini evangelijskih crkva v Ameriki, you're not allowed to drink wine, period. Ti ni dovoljeno piti vino. No good Christian drinks wine or beer, period. Noben dober kristijan ne pije vina ali piva. Is that what the Bible teaches? Ali Biblija to uči? No, actually, the Bible exactly teaches the opposite. Biblija uči nasprotno od tega. I mean, read it. We are forbidden to judge each other in matters of food and drink. Forbidden! Mi smo, nam je prepovedano, da drugega sodimo glede pijač in hrane. So if the Lord says, don't eat pork, then don't eat pork. In če gospod pravi, ne jest pijač, Ne jesti svinine, ne jej svinine. You just don't judge your brother if your brother eats pork. Ampak ne sodi svojega brata, če tvoj brat... If it's true that we're not allowed to drink wine or eat pork, then Slovenia is in trouble. Če je resnično, da ne smemo jesti svinine in piti vina, potem je Slovenija v težavah. And so we need to be very discerning, very careful on these matters. Zato moramo biti se pravi občutljivi v teh zadevah. Alright, and in Galatians chapter 3, Paul tells us very clearly what the purpose of this this category of law was. In v Galačanih tretje poglavje nam Pavel razlaga, kaj je bil namen tega zakona. Since the law was given by Moses, we're talking about category 2 we're talking about now. Govorimo o drugi kategoriji zakonov. Not category 1. Ne o prvi. Category 2. Drugi. Ne? And that is ceremonial law. It's mosaic law. To je, se pravi, ceremonialno, ceremonialni zakon od Mojzesa. That this was given by God to lead us and to instruct us, to be a tutor in our lives, like a teacher. Ta zakon je bil dan od Boga, da je naš, se pravi, da je Bog kot nek učitelj v naših življenjih in nam daje te zakone. In da nam pokaže in nas pouči o nekaterih zelo pomembnih zakonih. Ok, let's read that again. 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 Ampak noben ne more obdržati oziroma držati se teh zakonov. No one can be made righteous. Nihče ne more biti pravičen po zakonu. The life that God desires from you and I, the Christian life is not difficult, it is impossible. Se pravi, to, kar Bog od nas zahteva, kreščansko življenje, ni samo težko, ampak je nemogoče. Only one person ever lived it, successfully. In samo ena oseba je to življenje uspešno živela. Adam in Eve didn't. Adam in Eva tega ni samo spomnila. Moses was successful. Tudi Mojzes ne. David was a failure. David je bil zguba. John the Baptist failed. 
Janez Krstnik tudi njemu je spodatelo. The only person that lived without sin was Jesus Christ. Edini, ki je živel brez greha, je bil Jezus Kristus. And now the secret to his life, to the Christian life, is him living in us by the power of grace. In skrivnost kreščanskega življenja je, da je on živi skozi nas v Božji milosti, po Božji milosti. The third category is what I refer to just as scriptures in general. In tretja kategorija so pač Božja beseda. Now this includes for us today the Old Testament and the New Testament. In to danes vključuje tako staro zavezo, kot tudi novo zavezo. Ok, now the time that the Paul and the epistles were being written, in v času, ko je Pavel zapisal ta pisma, ok, there was no concept of Old Covenant, New Covenant, Old Testament, New Testament. Ni bilo nobenega koncepta o stari in novi zavezi. Ok, it was just the scriptures. Je bila samo Božja beseda. The law, the prophets, zakon, preroki, ne, the psalms, the proverbs, pregovori. That was the scriptures. In to je bila Božja beseda. That's what they quoted from. In to Božja besedo so citirali. The Bible says that they contested, they showed that Jesus was the fulfillment using the scriptures. In Biblija pravi, da so uporabljali te citate oziroma Božja besedo, da so dokazovali, da je Jezus izpolnitev. Now, of course, now we've had the New Testament epistles that are also been now canonized and have become scripture. Danes pa imamo novo zavezo in pisma, ki so bila kanonizirana in so del nove zaveze. And this is Božje besede. This is referred to throughout the Bible. This category is referred to throughout the Bible. Ta kategorija se nanaša na celotno Biblijo. Is God's law. Je Božji zakon. Or God's word. Beseda. The word of the Lord. Beseda gospoda. God's word is a light unto our path. It's referred to as light, luč. Božja beseda je luč na naši poti. And it's also referred to in the Bible as truth. Ali pa se jo poimenuje kot resnica. Jesus was praying, says, Lord, Father, thy word is truth. Jezus je rekel, da oče tvoja beseda je resnica. Okay? And this... This category has greater authority than does our conscience. In ta kategorija ima večjo avtoriteto kot naša vest. Whatever our opinions are. Karkoli so naša mnenja. We all have opinions. Vsi imamo mnenja. We all have traditions. Vsi imamo tradicije. But clear scripture, clear instructions, Old or New Testament, out have greater authority than any person's conscience or any denomination's instruction. Ampak spravi te zakoni, Božji zakoni, imajo višjo avtoriteto kot katera koli mnenja. And what does Jesus do with this category? In kaj je Jezus naredil s to kategorijo? He continues it. Jezus to kategorijo nadaljuje. And the soul does the Apostle Paul. In tako tudi Apostol Pavel. Read, if you would, 2 Timothy, chapter 3. Drugo, Timoteju 3, 16 do 17. Vse pismo je navdihnjeno od Boga in koristno za poučevanje, svarjenje, za poboljševanje in vzgojo v pravičnosti, da bi bil Božji človek popoln in pripravljen za vsako dobro delo. All scripture has been given inspired by God. Vsa Božja beseda je navdihnjena od Boga. When Paul was writing this to Timothy, what is he referring to? In ko Pavel piše to Timoteju, na kaj se to nanaša? He's talking about the Proverbs. Govori o pregovarih. The Psalms. Psalmih. All the Old Testament. Celotni stari zavezi. All of the history. O vse izgodovini. Everything written, the Bible says, in the Old Testament about Israel was written for our teaching and instruction in the New Testament. Vse, kar koli je bilo zapisano v Bibliji v času Izraela, je bilo za naše poučevanje in za navodila. So what is the principle that God gives us to apply this principle practically in our lives? In kakšen je zbaj Božji princip, da to apliciramo na naše življenje? You see, because many people say, well, we don't, we shouldn't really bother with the Old Testament, the Old Testament is not important. Zato, ker veliko ljudi pravi, da stara zaveza ni pomembna in da se ne bi smeli iz njo sploh ukvarjati. To je, da je to, 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 da je
Ampak to je napačna pozicija. Because what God wrote in the Old Testament, ker kar je Bog zapisal v Stari Zavezi preko preroko, He does not rewrite all of that again in the New Testament. Doesn't need to. Tega ni potrebno ponovno zapisati v Novi Zavezi. And so, for example, the Bible has a great deal to say about instrumental worship. Naprimer, Biblija veliko pravi o instrumentalnem slavljenju. How much instruction do we have about the harps and the instruments and the drums and the clarinets and let everything praise God? Koliko imamo navodil glede instrumentov, harf, klarineto in podobno in bobnov in da naj vse slavi gospoda. How much instruction do we have in the New Testament about this? Koliko navodil oziroma inštrukcij imamo glede tega v Novi Zavezi? Worship leader, how many, how many hundreds of verses do you have in the New Testament that says worship the Lord instrumentally? Koliko je teh zapisal v Novi Zavezi? I found one. Jaz sem našel samo enega. Why? Zakaj? Does God not have to give us all that instruction again? Zato, ker Bogu ni potrebno, da nam daje ta navodila še enkrat. Because He already has. Zato, ker jih je že dal. All scripture is given by God. Vsa Božja beseda je dana od Boga. Now, we're not talking about category 2, ceremonial law. In ne govorimo o kategoriji ceremonialnega zakona. But the Old Testament is only the five books, the 600 laws in the five books of Moses is just a small part of the entire Old Testament. Ampak teh 613 zakonov v prvih petih Mojzesovih knjigah je samo delček Stare Zaveze. So here's the principle. If the Old Testament scripture passes through the cross and is not addressed by Jesus or the apostles, then it remains in effect today. In se pravi, če Stara Zaveza, če se Stara Zavezna vrstica znajde na drugi strani križa, če pride skozi križ in če se v njej niso spregovorili Jezusa ali apostoli, je le ta v veljavi še danes. And so, does Jesus say anything or change anything about praise and worship in the New Testament? Ali Jezus kar koli spreminja glede hvaljenja in slovljenja v Novi Zavezi? Does Paul or any of the apostles? Ali pa Pavel ali kateri koli izmed apostolov? The answer is no. Odgovor je ne. It passes through the cross, it's not changed. To gre preko križa in se ne spreminja. It's not fulfilled, it's not changed in any way, it's still a fact, it's still scripture today. In ni izpolneno in ni spremenjeno in je še zmeraj v pač učinku tudi danes. So does Old Testament scripture have authority, instruction and authority over my conscience or over the way we choose to live? Ali ima stara zaveza pač neka navodila glede moje vesti in kako naj bi živel. Of course it does. Seveda ima. I love studying the Old Testament. Zelo rad preučujem Staro Zavezo. Look at two different Hebrew boys born in two different global kingdoms of their time. Pogledajte dva različna hebrejska dečka, ki sta bila rojena v različnih globalnih kraljestvih v tistem času. Both of them slaves. Oba sta bila sužnja. One born in Egypt, or excuse me, one that lives his life in Egypt as a slave. Eden, ki je preživel svoje življenje v Egiptu kot sužen. And the other one lives as a slave in Babylon. Drugi, ki pa živi kot sužen v Babylonu. Both of them become prime ministers of the most powerful nations in the world at the world at the time. Oba sta postala predsednika vlade v tistih kraljestih v tistem času. I love studying these things, because this is God teaching you and I. Zelo rad to zadeve preočujem, ker to je tisto, kar Bog uči tebe in mene. God wants to promote His people into favor. Bog želi promovirati svoje ljudi. But the reason that these guys were promoted, the Bible says, is because they had an excellent spirit. Ampak razlog, zakaj so bili so bile te osebe promovirane je zato, ko so imele duha odličnosti. And as we develop excellent spirits in our own hearts and lives, we will see God's hand of favor and promotion on us as well. In tudi, ko mi razvijamo duha odličnosti v naših življenjih, bomo videli naklonjenost Boga in spaj promocije. Here's a controversial topic. In to je pač kontroverzna tema. Does tithing, for example, and giving, does it pass through the cross unchanged? 
ali dejanje oziroma desetina gre skozi križ in je uveljave še danes? Because very, very many preachers today and authors today say that's Old Testament, it doesn't apply to us today. Ker veliko pridigarjev pač oči, kakor da to ni uveljave danes. So as it passes through the cross, does Jesus address the subject of tithing? Ali Jezus načne temo o desetini? Yes, he does. Yeah. And what's he say? In kaj pravi? And you should tithe. In da bi morali dejati desetino. Just don't forget about some of the other important issues of the heart. In da ne pozajbimo o nekaterih drugih pomembnih zadevah v naših srcih. So Jesus doesn't stop the principle. Jezus ne zaostavi tega principa. He doesn't alter the principle. In ga ne spreminja. It passes through the cross. Ampak gre preko križa. Ok, I have time to we can go through dozens and dozens of controversial subjects and show you how we can begin to correctly interpret things. In lahko gremo čez ducate in ducate različnih kontraverznih tem. But let's look now at the fourth category. Ampak poglejmo četrto kategorijo. This is not the Torah, this is referred to as the Talma. To ni Torah, ampak je se nanaša kot na Talmud. It was referred to, as you read the scriptures, it will say many times the law. In v besedi se dosk tikrat govori kot o zakonu. Or it refers to as the tradition of the elders. Ali pa o tradiciji starešin. And so these were orally, these were now, ok, God gave ten commandments. Ok, se pravi, Bog je dal deset zapovedi. Moses, God gave 613 more. Moses je dal 613 zakonov. And then the elders came along through the centuries with their tradition and added thousands and thousands more instructions. In starešine so skozi stoletja tradicij dodale še na tisoče svojih zakonov. Fourth commandment, first category. Fourth commandment in the first category. Se pravi, četrta zapoved v prvi kategoriji. Keep the Sabbath holy. Se pravi, spoštuj sobotni dan. Moses comes with the Torah and gives several more instructions on what it means to keep the Sabbath holy. What does God want? Moses pride s Toro in doda še veliko dodatnih inštrukcij glede spoštovanja sobote. And then the elders and the tradition of the elders came along and added thousands of more laws and rules as to how to keep the Sabbath. In potem še starešine in s svojimi tradicijami so dodale še na tisoče svojih zakonov, kar pomeni pač, da ne delajo v sposobu. Today, this was all oral written, it was not written down until 300 years after Jesus. In to ni bilo zapisano do 300 let po Jezusu. And now you can go on Amazon.com and you can buy a set if you want a books on the Tolma. In lahko pa ga iš na Amazon in pač kupiš to knjigo, ki pravi, mislim, ki govori v Talmudu. It's about 6,200 pages. Je, to je približno 6,200 strani. Instructions, yeah, rules, laws. Se pravi, inštrukcij, zakonov. And so, this Jesus greatly restricts. In Jezus pa te, ta pravila zelo omejuje. One day the Pharisees came and saw Jesus and his disciples eating. In en dan so prišli farizeji in so videli kako Jezus in njegovi učenci jejo. And they had not washed their hands yet. In si še niso oprali rok. And immediately their judgmental attitude, oh my god, they're unclean. In tako so jih začeli soditi, da so nečisti in da so grešniki. You must wash your hands before you eat. Tako zakon se pravi, moraš si umiti roke pred jedjo. What category of law was that? Katera kategorija zakona je bila to? Commandment number 11, thou shall wash thy hands before you eat. I don't think so. It's not in the law of Moses. Se pravi, ni v zakonu o Mojzesu. This was a tradition. To je bila tradicija. Ok, now not all traditions are bad. In niso vse tradicije slave. But when they nullify or they undermine God's word, then they become evil. Ko pa izničijo ali spodkopavajo Božjo besedo, takrat so pa zlobni. And so Jesus responds to them and says, you think that what goes into a man defiles him? In Jezus pač to spodbija s tem, ko pravi, da 
če mislite, da kaj se pravi omadežuje človeka, kar pride skozi njegova usta. He says, no, it's what goes out of a man's mouth that defiled him. Noter, ampak da tistega omadežuje, kar gre skozi njegova usta ven. And he uses this opportunity now to, to, to teach and to restrict this kind of religious law. In zato uporabi to priložnost, da izniči in omeji ta ta zakon. And he refers to he refers to commandment number five, verb category one. In se nanaša na peto zapoved v prvi kategoriji. That is that we are to honor our father and our mother. In da moramo spoštovati očeta in mamo. And that doesn't mean just that we speak respectfully to them. That means we take care of them financially. They were instructed to take care of their parents in their old age. Se pravi, to ne pomeni samo, da govorimo starši na spošljiv način, ampak da tudi finančno skrbimo za njih, ko so ostareli. Ok, this applies in Germany too. In to deluje tudi v Nemčiji. And so the Pharisees, the religious sect, ok, came up with a tradition. In Farizeji, torej ta religiozna sekta je prišla van s svojo tradicijo. And that is if I tithe, to je da z desetino. I don't have to financially support my mother and father. Ne potrebujem finančno podpirati očeta ali mamo. And Jesus says, you take your traditions, Jezus pa je rekel, vi vzamite svoje tradicije, and you exercise authority over God's word in izvajate avtoriteto nad Božjo besedo. Now we're in a category where it's not just bad, it's wicked. In zdaj nismo v kategoriji, ki je slaba, ampak ki je zlobna. And guess what? Not just the Catholic Church, we know historically is... There was a reformation because of this topic. In v katoliški crkvi je bilo zgodovinsko tudi reformacija zaradi te teme. Because all of these monks were beginning to read and study scripture like Luther and Calvin and others. Ker so različni menihi začeli brati in preočevati Božjo besedo, kot so bili Calvin ali Luther. And they were seeing the inconsistencies of what the Pope and the Catholic Church was teaching and what Jesus Christ taught himself. In ker so videli nekonsistentnost v tem, kar je papež učil in kar je učil Jezus Kristus. And they began to realize this fourth category cannot be allowed. In so videli, da ta četrta kategorija ne sme biti dovoljena. Good traditions is fine, but bad traditions is another story. Dobre tradicije so v redu, ampak slabe tradicije, to je pa druga zgodba. But I want to just beat up on the Catholic Church. Ampak ne želim se samo Because for for a thousand five hundred years they have been generating and creating all kinds of laws that that override God's scripture. Zato ker tisoč petsto let so kre kreirali spaj različne zakone ki so povozil Božje besedo. All the Protestant churches in the world do the same thing too. In ampak tudi vse protestantske cerkve delajo isto. Oh, every Protestant church I've been in has got its own traditions. Tudi vsaka protestantska crkov ima svoje tradicije. Not all of it is bad. In niso vse slabe. Some traditions are good. Nekatere tradicije so dobre. But many traditions actually override the word of God. Ampak veliko tradicij pač povozi Božjo besedo. You are not allowed to eat certain things. Niti dovoljeno jesti določenih stvari. You are not allowed to drink certain things. Niti dovoljeno piti določenih pijač. What's the authority that that's based upon? Na kateri avtoriteti je to bazirano? Based on the authority of the traditions of the denomination. Pač na avtoriteti tradicije te iste denominacije. Many denominations will tell you exactly how you can dress and how you can not dress. Se pravi, nekje ti tudi povedo, kako se lahko oblačiš in kako se ne smeš oblačiti. Rules and upon rules upon rules that do not come from, they are not under the authority of God's scripture. Pravila na pravila na pravila, ki niso pod avtoriteto Božje besede. So let's just touch a few of these. In dajmo se dotakant. As we try to bring a little application. As we bring a little application. 
se pravi, da bomo prinesli aplikacijo. Is it okay for the Christians to smoke? Cigarettes. Ali je v redu za kristjane, da kadijo cigarete? This is treated as a sin in most Protestant denominations that I know of. In v veliko protestantskih denominacijah je to tretiran kot greh. Is there any scripture on this at all? Ali je kakršna koli beseda glede tega? Someone will say, yes, the Bible says that our bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit. Nekateri bodo rekli, da, naše teleso so tempel svetega duha. I remember a internationally known speaker on television preaching against smoking one time. I was watching him. In poznam, mislim, gledal sem enkrat tega mednarodnega govornika, ki je govoril, kaščanskega, ki je govoril proti kajenju. And he said, this is a sin. In je rekel, to je greh. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Vaše telesa so tempel svetega duha. And if this guy was not 40 kilos overweight, I don't know what he was. Če ta človek ni bil 40 kilogramov pretežek, pol ne vem. He had a belly so big, imel je zelo velik trebuh, that he had not seen his feet in probably 30 years. Da naj boš svojih stopalni vedel 30 let. And I was just thinking myself, I was just grieved in my heart. In a... Pač uželostil sem se v svojem srcu. Zato, ker to je točno tak farizejski duh, ki ga je Jezus preziral. In fakt, Paul goes on and says, In tudi Pavel je rekel, ali vi pač počnete te stvari, ki učite druge, da ne jih ne počnejo. Zato sem v Hungary just not long ago. Nedolgo nazaj sem bil na Mađarskem. In ko sem sedel za mizo, pri zajtrku mi je pastor govoril. Ali bi rad malo kave? In mi je rekel, da nimam kave v svojem domu, zato ker ne pijem kave. Kafe je drug. Kava oziroma kofein je droga. Imam nekaj instantne kave, če hočeš. Ali je rekel, da je to vse 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 Cel dan pije Coca-Cola. And I had to point this out to him, because I love my brother. In to sem mu, to sem pač ga moral izpostaviti. I was just trying to help him with a beam he had in his own eye, so that he can help me to splinter in my eye. In sem mu pomagal s tem njegovim deblom, ki ga imel v svojem očesu, da mi bo on lahko pomagal s trsko v mojem. I said, have you ever really looked and read the ingredients on a can of Coke? Ali si že prebral sestavine, sem mu rekel, ki so opisane na plačevinki Coca-Cola? Believe it or not, it has the same drug. Ali verjameš ali ne, ima isto drogo. And these are the kind of things we do. I was in another church. In bil sem tudi v šenici. It was very hot. It was like July, August. Je bilo zelo vroče, je bilo je mogoče julija ali augusta. I could just wait, waiting to finish my sessions, my sessions so that I can run out the door and get some fresh air. In sem komaj čakal, da končam s svojimi predavanji, zato da sem lahko šel ven na svej zrak. And I finished, you know, a prayer. In sem končal z molitvijo. And before everybody else opened their eyes, I ran out the door. In preden so vsi odprli oči, sem stekal ven. You know, wonderful, ne? Right after me, the door opens. In tako je za mano se ponovno odpre vrata crkve. And out comes a lady. In ven pride ta gospa. And she didn't even make it fully out the door. She didn't even fully make it out the door and she was already pulling a cigarette out of her pocket. In niti še ni uspela stopiti skozi crkvo in je že vlekla ven cigaret. She's lighting it. In ga je prižigala. And she didn't see me. In je pihan na vame tim. And immediately on her face I saw the the shock. In na njenem obrazu sem videl ta šok. Followed by 
embarrassment and shame. In because surely I'm going to judge her. Because because smoking is a sin. Good Christians don't smoke. I said, I said, please don't feel uncomfortable. I, I, don't, I don't see you. I, I'm not looking down on you. I'm not looking down on you. Okay? Now hear my heart. Okay? I, I don't smoke myself. I used to when I was young. Not a good idea. There's lots of things that are not a good idea. But when I cross the line and start judging others because I am better than them, because I don't do that, I step out from under the grace of God and I come back under law. And now I'm in trouble. Because it's impossible to live life under the law and not break the law constantly. Okay. My, I got radically saved when I was 19 years old. I was uh, in Germany. My parents were believers, no one in my family were believers. Uh, moji radically saved by the grace of God. Nobody had to teach me to be great, to be happy. Uh, no one had to teach me to be uh, to be a giver. Uh, učil, uh, da ne no one had to teach me to pray. Ali kako naj molim. No one had to teach me to be full of joy. Ali kako naj bom pon uh, radosti. The grace of God was operating in my life. Ampak Božja milost je bila ta, ki je operirala v mojem življenju. In five years I was a Pharisee. V petih letih sem postal farizej. Religious. Zelo religiozen. Judgmental. Zelo tak, ki, takšen, ki je sodil. And I was very clear to my churches and my leaders and my elders what they could and could not do according to my standards. Zelo sem bil jasen do buditelj v mojih crkvah, kaj lahko in kaj ne smejo delati. Ne? And, and so I said, you, this, I don't want you going to violent movies that are, that are you know, too much violence. In sem jim rekel, da ne smejo gledati uh, teh nasilnih filmov, v katerih je praveč nasilja. What kind of example are you going to be as a leader in the church? Kakšen primer boš kot voditelj v crkvi? I had my own opinion as to what kind of music people can listen to and not listen to. Imel sem svoje mnenja, kakšno glasbo lahko poslušajo oziroma kakšne glasbe ne smejo poslušajo. In fact, in, in five years I had an opinion on just about everything. <laughs> v roku petih let sem imel mnenje v vsem. In one day the Holy Spirit, I had an encounter again with the Holy Spirit. In nekega dne sem imel pomnovno and the Lord said to me one day, spoke to my, my heart. And he, he actually quoted from Romans, 3, Romans 14. You want to know what he said? Who are you to judge my servants? I was devastated. <laughs> I cried for four days. <laughs> Man, the Holy Spirit rebuke you. Okay? That's a serious thing. <laughs> yeah, Jesus rebuked lots of Pharisees all the time. And their hearts only became harder. Yeah? They didn't repent, they became angry. Unfortunately, I was not too far down the road. When Jesus rebuked me, Jesus rebuked me, he broke me. And I've been praying ever since then, I don't ever want to go down that road again. 
In molim takrat, da nikoli ne želim več stopiti na to pot. And so every denomination has a long list of their own rules and regulations. Vsaka denominacija ima dolgo listo pravil. Not just the Catholics. Ne samo katoliki. I go in one church one Sunday. In grem v eno cerkev v eno nedeljo. And they have communion every single Sunday. In majo gospodovo večerjo vsako nedeljo. Is that required? Ali je to za... Is that a law? Ali je to zakon? What category is that? Katera kategorija je to? Tradition. Tradicija. Does it mean that it's wrong? Ali pomeni, da je to napačno? If you do it by faith, če to počneš v veri, if you do not try to derive righteousness from this, če ne želiš črpati pravičnosti iz tega, and if you don't try to push your traditions on other people, In če te tradicije ne osiljuješ drugim. On the same day you have to do, I went to another church. In to isto nedeljo sem šel še v eno cerkov. In the same building. V isti stavbi. And they have communion once a month. Kjer imajo gospodovo večerjo enkrat na mesec. Is that okay? Ali je to v redu? Category 4, tradition. Kategorija 4, tradicija. As long as we don't judge each other, God says, that's fine with me, do it in faith. Samo dokler drug drugega nasodimo in to delamo v veri. Don't judge each other. In pač, da ne sodimo drug drugega. Let everyone follow after their conviction. Naj vsak sledi po svoji presoji. I was in another church. In bil sem še v eni cer. Just recently. Prav kar. And the brother, a person, brother got up and started reading some scriptures. In brat je vstal in je začel brat nekaj besede. And three women immediately took their shawls out and they covered their heads. In tri ženske so vzele, se pravi, šale oziroma rute van in so si pokrile glavo. Okay. Is that a tradition? Ali je to tradicija? Yes, it's a tradition that the church had also in Corinth. Paul talks about this particular tradition in Corinth. To je tudi tradicija, v kateri Pavel govori v pismu Korinčanom. And he tells the Corinthians, if you can do this by faith, I understand what it represents, submission to authority. In če to delate, in jim piše, da če to delate v veri, ker ko veste, kaj to predstavlja, se pravi podreditev avtoriteti. He says, but none of the rest of the churches of Jesus Christ had this tradition. Ampak druge crkve, ki so v Jezusu Hristu, so nimajo te tradicije. So if you want to do that in faith, okay. Če to želite delati v veri, je v redu. He doesn't tell the Corinthians not to do it. In ne pravi Korinčanom, da ne delati tega. He just simply explains to make sure they understand that they're doing it in faith, not out of law or legalism. Ampak jim želi razdržiti, da naj to delajo iz vere. Ne pa iz zakona oziroma legalizma. And don't impose your conviction on other people. In da ne tega ne osiljujejo drugim. Ne? Ok, those are pretty easy, right? What about tattoos? Ok, there's one from category 2, the law of Moses. In te so bili dokaj enostavni. Kaj pa tatuji? To je nekaj iz druge kategorije, iz Mojzesovih zakonov. Anywhere you look, you see young people, especially with tattoos all over their body. In kamarkoli pogledaš, lahko vidite mlade ljudi, ki so polni tatujev. You won't see any of my daughter here, sitting here. In ne boste videli nobenega tatuja na mojih čeri. Because I will apply law and kill her. Zato, ker bom apliciral zakon in jo bom upil. But is it make it more righteous? Are you more righteous if you have a tattoo and someone else doesn't have a tattoo? Ampak te naredi to bolj pravičnega, da imaš oziroma da nimaš tatuja kot nekdo drug. No. Ne. You say by grace, not tattoos or not having tattoos, ne? Odrešen si po veri, ne s tem, da imaš oziroma da nimaš tatuja. Ok, these are all pretty easy here. These are all, ok, now let me give you, let me give you one last one, which is a little bit more challenging. In še zadnji, ki je malce bolj zahtevan. Okay, and Paul is addressing this in in his letter to to the Corinthians. In Paul je pač to pisal v svojem pismu, v svojih pismih Korinčanom. And his instruction is is that the women in the corporate services should remain silent. They got questions. Go home and ask your husband. In da ženske bi pač morale biti v cerkvi v tišini. 
se pravi tiho in da če imajo kakšno vprašanje, da morajo iti domov in da ne vprašajo svoje moži. As says the law. Se pravi, kot pravi tudi postava. Ok, now that you are a little bit more familiar with this subject. Zdaj, ko ste malce pol zbližani s to temo. What category of law is Paul addressing? Katero kategorijo, na katero kategorijo se naša to? Is it the 11th commandment? Women be quiet. Ali je to enajsta zapoved? Ženske bodite tiho. Some men wish that God had written one more commandment. Nekateri možje si želijo, da bi Bog zapisal še en zakon. But the big question is this. Is this referring to the Torah? Is this one of the 613 commandments of Moses? Ali je to kar se nanaša Tora, ali je to del 613 zakonov od Mojzesa. What do you think? Kaj misliš? I've set you up now to answer correctly, but if I wasn't to set you up, 99 out of every 100 Christians would say, of course it's in the law, in the Bible. Se pravi, zdaj sem vas pripeljal do tega, da ste dali pravilen odgovor. Ampak 99 odstotkov kristijanov bi mislilo, da je to zapisano v Božji besedi. It is not in the Torah. Tega ni v Torah. It is not in categories 1, 2 or 3. Ni v prvi, niti v drugi, niti v tretji kategoriji. But it was in category 4. It was a tradition of the elders. Ampak je bilo v četrti kategoriji. Torej, da je bila to tradicija strašin. And this is one of the most divisive subjects in the body of Christ today. Still. To je še zmeraj ena izmed najbolj razdirajočih tem v Kristusovem telesu še danes. And if we understand the content and the culture, ampak če razumemo osebino in kulturo, it makes perfect sense why Paul is saying this. Je, se pa lahko ugotovimo pa povan smisel v tem, zakaj Pavel to pravi. Okay, there was a lot of, of challenges as the early church was beginning to advance. Je bil zakon izzivov, ko je prva crkva začela napredovati. And women had been suppressed by mankind since the beginning, since the fall. In ženske so bile ponižanje od človeštva že od prvega paca. Okay, this is again a mid-eastern culture. To je še enkrat, naj povdarjim, se pravi, ta bližnja vzhodna kultura. It is very easy for us to think, to understand this, I think. Mislim, da je za nas zelo enostavno, da to razumemo. Because it hasn't changed at all in the Middle East for 2000 years. Ker se na bližnjem vzhodu to v 2000 letih ni spremenilo. Look at about how one, one and a half billion Muslims treat women in the world today. Poglejte, kako 1,5 milijarde muslimanov tretira ženske. Women are considered property. Ženske se, na ženske, o ženske se pogovarja kot o posesti. They have no authority. In nimajo autoritete. And their value is not equal to a man. In njihova vrednost ni enako vredna moškem. Now Jesus and the gospel sets women free from this. Ampak Jezus v svojih evangelijih z evangelijem osvobodi ženske. Are women, are men more valuable to women in the eyes of God, I ask you? Ali so, se pravi, vprašam vas, ali so moški bolj vredni kot ženske v Božjih očeh? Ne. Ne. No. So obviously, the application of this has got to be something else is going on. Aplikacija tega pa je, da se dogaja nekaj drugega. At the time, as the church was advancing, for women to speak out publicly or to argue or talk in these synagogues and meeting places was very disrespectful. Ampak v tistem času, da so ženske govorile v crkvi in pač da so rasle, a ne, v autoriteti je bilo zelo nespošljivo. In Paul realize that if he didn't give instruction to say women, please, you have liberty in Christ, but in corporate meetings be quiet, because you'll start a riot. In zato je Pavel zapisal, da v tem smislu, da ženske ste osobojene v Kristusu in imate svobodo v Kristusu, ampak 
na skupnih srečanih pa bodite tiho, zato ker bo drugač povzročen nemir. In Paul knew that it was going to take time for the gospel, the light and the salt to transform society. In Paul je vedel, da bo evangelij potreboval čas, da bo transformiral družbo. Imagine if we together would say, ok, tomorrow we meet at the airport in Ljubljana. Predstavljaj si, da se mi dogovorimo, da se jutri zberemo na letališče Ljubljana. And we're going to fly to Saudi Arabia. In da bomo poleteli proti Saudski Arabi. And for the next 10 years we're going to be church planting. In da naslednjih deset let bomo tam sejali cerkvi. In we're going to reach these 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 Middle Eastern people with their traditions that go back thousands of years. In da bomo skušali dosežt te to bližnje vzhodno kulturo, ki je več tisočletna. Guess what what I would say to my wife. Ali veste kaj bi rekel svoj ženi? Guess what we would say to all the women. Ali pa vsem ženskam na našem timu. You know. I ain't any better or more special than you. Okay? I would say, I would tell my wife, you know that I am not any better than you. Rekel bi svoje ženi, ti veš, da nisem boljši od tebe. But cover your head and be quiet. Ampak pokri si glavo in bodi tiho. Because in this culture, it would be viewed as extremely disrespectful. Zato, ker v tej kulturi bi bilo to izjemno nespoštljivo. And it would start a riot. In bi povzročilo nemire. We probably won't live more than 20 minutes before they kill us. Verjetno ne bomo preživeli več kot 20 minut preden bi nas ubili. Okay, so this is the reason why Paul, I believe, very simple, this is such a, people have made this a very complicated subject. I don't think it is. In ljudje so zelo zakomplicirali to temo, ampak jaz mislim, da ni. I, we know that this is category 4 traditions of the Jews at the time. Vemo, da je to četrta kategorija, se pravi, tradicije judov v tistem času. And we know that it's about 100% of the tradition in the entire Muslim world today. In vemo, da je to sto odstotno tradicija v današnjem muslimanskem svetu. But it can be misinterpreted if we don't understand these four categories of law. In lahko to napačno razumemo, če ne poznamo teh štirih kategorij zakona. Ok, now you may not agree with that particular point. Mogoče se s to točko strinjaš. Vem, da je kontroverzna. Nikoli nisem vprašal Klemna ali Carol in ne vem, kaj o tem mislite. But even if you don't agree with me, you're still commanded to love me. In tudi, če se ne strinjaš s mano, ti je še zmeraj zaukazano, da me moraš ljubiti. So these are the four categories. Jesus deals with them very differently, each one. In tudi, To so štiri kategorije in Jezus se pravi se ukvarja z njimi različno. And so to sum up, I think this slide is on here, let's just sum this up because we're out of time. These are the four guidelines that Paul gives on this entire subject. In da pozamem, to so te štiri kategorije. Number one, be careful of legalism. Don't go into the ditch, off the road into legalism. Se pravi, ne iti toliko spoti v vajarek, da greš v legalizem. On the other side, don't have to ditch on the other side of the road into liberalism. Na drugi strani je pa jarek liberalizma. Number three is love your brother. Don't let your brother stumble. Tretja je ljubi svojega brata, ne pusti, da pade. And the entire chapters are devoted to this subject. In cela poglavja so posvečena temu od Paula. Last story. I was in a church not long ago. I was invited. Ne dolgo nazaj sem bil povabljen v cerkov. And it was a Romanian church. In to je bila v Romuniji cerkov. And they were very legalistic. In so bili zelo legalistični. Had been Pentecostal background. Z binkoštnim ozadjem. And so I shared and afterwards some of the leaders took me to lunch. In sem podelil besedo in nekateri voditelji so me potem paljali na kosilo. And we sat down and the waiter came and they said, what would you like to drink? In smo se vsedli in je prišel na takar in nas vprašal, kaj bi radi pili. Now, I know my brothers. How do you think? 
Jaz poznam svoje brate, kako razmišljajo. Christians do not drink wine or beer even at dinner because it's a sin. Kristijani ne pijejo vina ali piva niti pri večeri, ker je to greh. So what did I say? Bring me two beers, please. In kaj sem rekel, prines mi dva pera. Of course not. Seveda ne. I'm not going to intentionally cause my brother to stumble. Ne bom namenoma povzročal tega, da se moj brat spotakne. Ne? I ordered a mineral water. Naročil sem mineralno vado. Which is very good. Ki je zelo dobro. A week later, in teden kasneje, I was at a Slovene church. Sem bil v slovenski cerkvi. And I finished. They took me to lunch. In ko sem končal, so me peljali na kosilo. And the waiter came. In je prišel na takar. Would you all like to drink? In je vprašal, kaj bi radi pili. In vsi smo naročili eno pivo. And we all ordered a beer. In vsi smo naročili eno pivo. No problem, nobody had any, no judgments, no issues. Ni problema, noben ni imel nobenih težav. See, so Paul says, I have liberty, but I don't, I don't abuse my liberty in Christ. Paul pravi, da imam svobodo v Kristusu, ampak te svobode ne zdorabljam. And then the final commandment, which is the greatest of all, is Jesus says, this new commandment I give you. In zadnja zapoved, za katero Jezus pravi, da vam dajem to novo zapoved. Obey this and all, you don't have to worry about all the rest. Boga je to zapoved in niti potrebno skrbeti za ostale zapovedi. So Father, we just thank you for this time together. Oče, zahvaljujemo se ti za ta čas skupaj. We ask that these truths would become living truths to each of us. Prosimo te, da te resnice postanejo žive resnice v vsakemu izmed nas. Open the eyes of our understanding. Odpri našega razumevanja. As we read scripture. Ko beremo besedo. And to clearly be able to see what category of law we're talking about. In da lahko jasno vidimo, o kateri kategoriji zakona beremo. But most importantly, Lord, we thank you for your grace. Ampak najbolj pa se ti zahvaljujemo za tvojo milost. Because it is your power working in our hearts and lives. Ker je tvoja moč, ki deluje v naših življenjih. And so, Lord, it is by grace that we live. Zato, Gospod, je živimo po milosti v kreščansko življenje. Molim za blagoslov nad vsakega vernika tukaj in ktorkoli to gleda preko videa. V Jezusovem imenu. Amen.